yeah, the CRC tech, I feel like it's a, uh, like we're saying, a great example of the necessity for educating consumers because it's not a cut and dry, good or bad thing. You know, it's really a process of, you know, adding refinement. Adding well, and I'll tell you where it got a bad name is people running really bad material. A hundred percent, for and, sure. And, and, you know, the, the chromatography, um, cause like I said, I, I hate that CRC has become the name for it, but I guess we can't, we can't decide those yeah, kind of yeah, things, yeah. but cause it's not really yeah. a full description of what's going on. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, so chromatography, you know, can only do so much. So if you take a really nasty, nasty starting material and you just strip off, you know, what the, the, the media can, you've still got some nasty stuff left behind. And I think some people got some really bad taste in their mouths. No oh, unintended. for sure. For sure. When, From nasty oh, shit. Oh yeah. When CRC know? first came out, everybody was going hardcore into yeah. it and that's what they're doing. They found out, oh, I could take last year's bag trim and make it look yeah. like something that's live resin. But when you dab the shit, it definitely doesn't taste yeah. like live, live resin. So it kind of quickly tainted the whole like concept. In the end, even though I think there's, there's places for all kinds of extract in the industry, I the think same, that same. The, the connoisseur level extracts, the really high terpene, um, you know, HTE style saucy products, the the beautiful, you know, super flavorful batters and stuff like that will end up just ruling the industry. Um, I think eventually people will. I don't think they'll they'll stop doing remediation and, and selling remediated products, but I just think that value wise, live resin products are just gonna you know end up being the for sure for the sure standard. Oh of, yeah, like I want something because that's the shit. closest like mirroring the plant itself. You know, it's like closer to the flavor. Exactly. It's gonna give you the best THC concentration. You know, and like I said, I'm into CRC if you're not. Dis disguising it as something that yeah. it's not. You know, if you're saying, hey, this is a highly remediated product because it's something yeah. that's cheap and it's, you know, that's what it is and you're selling it for a low dollar point, you know, that's your Well, an oxidation model. is a bitch. You can't stop it. Um, you know, the, we, we when we teach our clients and our customers, we teach them about oxidation and basically, you know, when we're fresh frozen yeah, harvesting yeah. or whatever, or even when they're giving us material to extract. Very important. Um, to, like, that, as soon as that plant's cut down, it's decomposing it's deteriorating yeah. so I, th I, th I think a lot of remediation is done just purely based off that oxidation pigment and that pigment that that basically is quickly on set after harvesting um because yeah if you're indeed, not extracting indeed, in that sure. first month two months of you know your cured material you're you're fighting some sort of heavy pigment oh yeah for sure and like uh if you're basing an extract solely off of its color, you know, from maybe being a consumer that doesn't really understand the aspects yeah. of what you're, you know, really looking at, then of course you're gonna look at some darker oil, which the extractor knows like is fire. And you know, while you're extracting it, we've all extracted like some bomb weed that yeah. came out just a hue too dark. Yeah. You know, dude, I had some garlic turfs that were like fucking dark, dark brown. They were darker than that bottle. Yep, yep, and yep. Uh, I was dabbing on that shit for, for months just because but I, that's the bomb that shit sometimes, taste, you know? Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? and I, like I, every I totally strain is a little different. So if like, if you're approaching it from understanding that the plant has so many different compounds and different expressions yeah. and different flavors, because for me, you know, like, I like dabbing all kind of different shit, you yeah. know? And I'm not going to say like, oh, I only like the sweet stuff or I only like the garlicky stuff. You know, I like the full spectrum, like, uh, possibilities that cannabis have you know <laughs> when it could be just depending on your mood too you know you could you could feel Indeed. like you know and we're learning that the terpenes are affecting the entourage effect a lot Correct. more you know and like having different terpene uh composition is like more important than indica sativa you know when well it comes and down to it almost. you know we would we would we kind of dove into it a little bit with doc on chem church but oh excuse me uh we were talking about uh, the biological effect of terpenes and kind of the ho hormonal impact sure, and biological yeah. effect because of <laughs> the relation we have to to the cannabis plant itself. Mm -hmm. So you know, really seeing those terpenes affect people and kind of affect your own mood when you when you medicate is really cool. Yeah, that's something I like really find fascinating about cannabis is that it has more like terpenes than anything else. You know, we yeah. find these things everywhere else, but the expression of terpenes that are possible. It seems yeah. almost endless, endless right. you know? So, and then, yeah, like over mediating stuff, you don't camouflage your product. Don't yeah. lie about, you know, if it's fresh frozen, yeah. if it's, you know, some last year's bag material and sell it as that. But I, I feel like it's safe to say that me personally, 
I don't mind smoking a few less impurities if yeah. I'm still getting the, well, the cannabinoids, getting a good terpene expression. And remediation and 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 you know purifying and, and filtering is is common practice in so many industries. Man, that's a, that's a point you that know, I really like talking about. And like, would you drink your water on fucking for filtered, sure, you know, for with, sure? And you know that's that's like the consumer knowledge because. Most of us don't know anything about any of our food beverage processing, any of our pharmaceutical processing. So it's like, if we want to hold weed to that or cannabis to that same standard, you know, we got to get educated on our food beverage processing because everything is filtered. I mean, one of the first things I learned about color remediation is that they do a white wine. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, yeah, I've never seen any cloudy white wine. That makes sense. They filter the shit already. Exactly. So you can't be like, oh, I don't want no CRC, but then. You're exposing well, yourself same to the same thing with the food, food oils, you know, olive oh, oils, yeah, for different sure. types of seed oils, the food oils, hexane um, extractions through all yep. kind of filtration media. So, yep. no, it's wild to see. And I think the consumer base really doesn't know how, you know, I always say no new tech. Yeah, and and what that means is basically the technology we use in, in cannabis is truly just taken from another industry. 100%. Um, sure. You know, there's a fucking paper written on it from 1932 from some scientist. And yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And not every, but you know what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, all of these these techniques that we use have been adopted from other industry. Like, you know, you're not reinventing the wheel. Oh, yeah, very um, much so. And yeah. we've just kind of been in a, in a niche area where those companies who have mastered that stuff don't want to touch cannabis yet, you yeah. know. But we're get, transitioning to a period where now they kind of want to. And, like, yeah. how are any of us going to, like, fare up and size up against, like, oh, this is my SOP for hydrocarbon extraction against fucking Bayer or, like, one of these large pharmaceutical companies, you yeah. know. So well, and that's interesting you say that. Because you know, patent stuff is really that's, on the on, yeah, the, on yeah. the books. That's this like year. on the horizon and stuff. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, you know, well, so and a big conversation. You've seen you've seen it in other industries. Mm -hmm. um, this kind of pay to play kind of mentality, where um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that's patented. And when 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 people make equipment and when people you know bring something to market, they don't always do you know what I mean the due diligence or really research something and find out like oh, hey yeah. and what I'm fucking with is it patented? So I think a lot of companies are kind of you know freaking out right now and kind of looking where things are gonna go with these kind of patent hounds and these guys that are these companies organizations that are emerging that are like well you know whatever you're selling or the process you're using that's patent. Did. Yeah, so yeah. you either pay us or you know we're taking you to court and you know yeah you lose yeah everything. for sure and like you're saying you know we all came up from inside of the industry you know uh, traditional market stuff so you figure something out you're like oh shit I'm the only motherfucker to know yeah, this you no. know it's like whoa we just did this for the first time yeah. you know and none of my ten homies doing this know anything about it yeah. but granted you know forty years ago somebody already got a paper about that you well know? and so, you don't know that somebody didn't soak it up from the industry and then say, oh, these motherfuckers aren't patenting this shit. I'm going to go. And indeed, fucking, indeed. For and sure, while for sure. they're everybody thinking they're doing novel shit, oh, yeah, I'm going to go fucking get the get the certification on this, get the paperwork. You know, that's low-key conversation I've been having at MJ BizCon a lot because, you know, this like big international platform. I want to say over the years, we've seen a lot of like people who were searching the floor, uh, researching the floor, and later on start manufacturing and, you know, putting out the same products that they see on the floor. Well, and, and that in a sense of primarily like international, you know, big money, like Chinese corporations type of shit. On well, Elliot Summit, I'm sure you've you followed Summit, you know, yeah, research yeah. as a short path glass. But I mean, he's, he's bitched about that and complained about oh, that. Oh yeah, just knocking you off know, IP yeah, galore. And, like they don't have any respect for, you know, patents exactly. and anything. Exactly. And Elliot actually went through and got a bunch of stuff patented. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He has some shit. The cool thing about Elliot, not many people know this and I don't want to butcher it. You know, you ask Elliot, but he has sure. some patents that are related to his family mm. that go back for distillation. Oh, I respect that. And okay. that kind of, that kind of got, you know, and I'm not going to tell his whole story, but that kind of got him, you know, into, into the distillation game is, is yeah, he had some, I respect that. Yeah. yeah he had like some, he had some skin in the game. Yes, yeah, generational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like so no, that. I mean, cover your ass. Um, it's it's going to be crazy to for see sure. It's going to be kind of crazy. Happens. It's going to be like you know companies that consist of multiple lawyers who bought up a whole yeah. bunch of patents, basically telling people, "Hey, uh, we own that SOP, so you're either going to stop or pay us revenue." Yeah. And then, granted, you know, all of us, you know, we built our businesses off this shit, and we're just like, uh, um, you know. So I've been kind of feeling for a while that you know we're on the verge of legalization. We're going to be combating the pharmaceutical industry, the food beverage yeah. industry, and those people who have mastered those techniques. And we really got to, you know, unify on uh, 
like a traditional market type, well, and, of, you know. And who but, knows what sort of innovation this will put. Sure, yeah. So, That's something I really like too. Like a lot of the pharmaceutical business minded people are now feeling comfortable to come into the uh, cannabis industry. So there's definitely like a, a symbiotic bridge. There's of some great minds right now that are that are that are putting together some some ideas and some plans to 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 basically approach extraction and 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 you know processing in a whole different level. Mm -hmm. So it'll be cool to kind of see what, what comes of that yeah, yeah, and what changes. Sure. There's gonna be like like what we see as standard, even BHO extraction, it's not gonna yeah. be the same, you know, three, four, five years from now, you know, with no. with what people are already doing and like applying that to cannabis. But you know, that kind of like ties me into what you're saying before, which is customer education and knowledge, you know, yeah. like we as manufacturers, as producers, you know, we have all the IP that we've been trying to kind of hold and, you know, share with the people you want to and just like kind of maximize our, you know, potential to profit off of it. And it's kind of coming to a point where, you know, um, it's not just us. We need to educate the consumer so they know if they're buying yep. organic juice or if they're buying mass produced you know, soda type yeah. of shit and like let them know why that's not, you know, why that's um, a choice that they can make. Well, and I think that'll really separate these, these, you know, corporate Chad companies that don't really for give sure, a fuck for sure. about their end product to these craft companies of, you know, legacy guys and guys that really <laughs> have cannabis skin in the game and, and come from a place where, where they consume these products and actually use these products and, and know, <laughs> okay, we're putting out a good quality end product. Whereas the, the corporate guy, Fuck, he don't even, you know, tried edibles once. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what I totally, mean? On totally, vacation totally, with sure. his old lady. For but, sure. You know, doesn't doesn't necessarily consume these products on a daily basis. So I think that that's where the the, the separation from cannabis culture really starts with these companies indeed, because they, they put out anything. Um, and I think the focus on craft and the focus on good quality products is going to lie within the craft smaller companies. Oh, hundred percent. And I feel like that's like a microcosm of the macrocosm of I was just like economic structure right now, you yeah. know, like, we're all considered to just be consumers yep. and partial, like the main kind of power you have to influence these large companies that are just pushing out bullshit for maximum profit, hiring as many, as few people as possible to turn out stakeholder profits and stuff like that. The consumer is the one who's going to be saying, I'm not going to buy from this multicultural, yeah. you know, corporation. I'm going to spend my money with mom and pop store who got the multi, you know, stage genetics, you know, like been in the game, skin in the yeah. game for multiple generations and like has a hard earned uh, input. But I feel like customer consumer um, knowledge is so important across the field yeah. because there's just like a screen in front of all of us about what we're buying for our food, what we're buying for our clothes. I feel like a lot of conversation about it's like- It's very programmed. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, the mass institutions want us to just buy shit. You yeah. know, they see us as just working and turning out products that they consume and what's their- what, When you know? you're seeing that with all these like celebrity brands that are popping up, you know what I mean? No no hate on anybody, everybody out there trying to get their money. Indeed. But, you know, a lot of these these bigger corporations are bringing on the celebrity bands, brands and-, and it, Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just because a product is backed by, you know, a, a famous face doesn't necessarily mean they have- anything to do with the product or know what's in the product. For or, sure. You know, and these companies notoriously come into a state, do really well, and then kind of fizzle off because I think people, you know, people fucking realize that, yeah, yeah the pre-rolls taste like fucking hay or, totally, you know, whatever. Totally. Just because it says, you know, Joe Schmo fucking Elvis fucking blunt on it doesn't mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to, it lot, really is the king of rock. I've talked to a I mean? lot of guys over the years and they're definitely like, we got this celebrity endorsed, we got this, and we're looking at buying all this shit and all this shit. And I'm like, and I'm like where are you getting weed from? Like, you know, who's growing? They're like, not even concerned about the grower, not yeah. even concerned about the strains they're growing or the genetics. And I'm just like, okay, like when you see it and you're seeing it happen all over and, and I won't say the names, but you know, a very big name came to town recently in New Mexico. Okay. And you know, there was a big old deal for it. They were, everybody was freaking out, but you know, I sent, I sent somebody, one of my guys went and got some, got some weed and we smoked it and it was nothing special. There you go. You know what I mean? Sure. And I, I predict that said company is going to watch their sales fizzle out and go down because that hype wears off. Indeed. You yeah. Know? If you don't have the quality product yeah. to back it. You said know? celebrity or said rapper only does his appearance. So yeah, appearance, for sure. You that's know, so keep, many times. That's not enough to keep yep. you coming back. You know, exactly. there's no soul in that. There's no exactly. passion in that, you know, compared to somebody who's like, you know, 
genetic doing genetic hunting you know and i'll say for you guys spot you know seeing you guys spot everybody in there is happy everybody in there is having a good time you guys like thank you multi-layered of good teams going on you know and that's the kind of like place you want to get products from we you truly know, believe we truly believe the the quality of the product is is dependent on the quality of the person making it. And I if you that. have people that. in there that are kicking the can, I don't want to fucking be here, fuck work, oh, fuck this place. Totally. Your that negative energy passes into your products. Yeah, there's no way you're making high quality products. It, I don't people, think so. When people hate being there. I don't I agree, think so. 100%. You might you might skip by and, and maybe make some decent shit, but no, at the end of the day, there's no longevity. That, there's, in that, yep, there's no longevity. And a lot of these companies too, you know, they have so much like turn and burn. They don't invest in their employees. Yep. They just like think that they could just get an automated SOP system and just put anybody in there to do Quality something. Quality people are are hard to find and that's the hardest part of business is building that quality team. Indeed. And once sure. you have quality people, you take care of them. Once you once you have people that are going for to back for you that, you know, are, are by your side and they're they're not only by your side but they're producing quality work and they're helping you achieve your dream, those people are the most important. 100%, man. You know, so, it's something to see a team of people and everybody's like putting their life work in that, you know, like putting their passion into that. Like, yep. And everybody's spot is important. Everybody's, yeah. you know, linking that yeah. chain. So no, Jess, Jess has been that guy. Like, fuck, he drove all this shit down here. <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. Made sure we had a <laughs> yeah. set, you know, but that's what I'm saying. This is epic, man. The portable podcast boom, yeah. you know, you no, and, and he's, it. he's been rocking I with me this. since the beginning. You know, he, you know, first website, first, first pictures we ever, nice. you know, nice. professional pictures we ever posted. But yeah, man, it's cool. Cool to see you guys down here as usual. As usual, um, yeah. I'm happy to see you. What's next as for well. Busy B? What's what's new on the horizon? Busy B, you know, um we are definitely trying to like incorporate more, you know, standalone modules. Yeah. You know, we talked a little bit about the filtration, up in yeah. filtration. You know, we've been doing the electro passive recovery and uh just like encouraging people to replace liquid CO2 with chillers, yeah. you know, man, that was the music. biggest, biggest thing. Oh yeah, did, for sure. Man. For sure. Cause you that know, I always huge. say liquid CO2 is like driving stick shift. You know, you put a chiller on there. That's a huge percentage of automation that is, uh, takes e that as the ease operation. So liquid CO2 works and it gets you cold, but it is a fucking bitch. And, uh, I was just talking to, um, that's where we get the beast name from, you know, I was just, just talking to bat. Mike, it's Mike like, gnarly. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about it and, I was and I was like, what do you he just got his chillers hooked mm -hmm. up? He's like, no more liquid CO2. I saw that. And I was like, I was like, what do you think about it? He's like, oh, it's awesome. And I was like, no more sketchy fucking hissing columns when you walk. <laughs> I used to do that first when we were running liquid CO2. I would run in the car, I'd run in the booth because I'd hear that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And be like, what the fuck, man? And fucking Cody be wouldn't be in the booth or whatever. He'd be, you know, walked outside for a second. I'd be like, Cody, Cody. He's like, no, it's good, to, man. We're good. Supposed to monitor that, you know, that's an indicator to turn. It off. <laughs> yep, and, yep, yep. Uh, so, so he'd be right around the corner. He wouldn't be yeah, far, yeah, but yeah. every time without foul. So no, for I, sure, it's definitely like you know a little raw and dirty. Yeah, you know, it's just like brute power, raw power. You know, a lot of cold kilowattage, a lot yeah. of just like uh, access to just very low temperatures. You're able to recover. You're able to de wax, but the chiller is just. Enhance the automation of the system, you know, significantly yeah. for sure. Hell yeah. But, yeah. But, you know, like, I'm uh, looking forward to chopping it up tomorrow. I, like, the whole concept of just educating consumers the is really important. The symposium is cool, man. man. Yeah. I think, you know, this year, I think Lex and, and Dustin really put their heads together and tried to add more substance to you know we always come out and party. yeah i'm talking all the we time with get, Lex about education up, you, know? you know what i mean but this takes it to the next level for sure for sure yeah. you know the best part about this is just like the community aspect kicking with the homies and being able to brainstorm and you know talk about these subjects that are important to all did of us, you see know? the safety posters lex made safety posters for all the guys for their labs he did say yeah, yeah 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 that's yeah, cool yeah. man that's cool for sure it's cool to be part of a group that gives a shit you know what I mean? And, indeed, and that goes indeed. goes the extra mile to really, you know, make sure that that consumer, that education um, is making it all the way to the consumer base. For sure. Because, you know, we're talking about like IP protection and, you know, everybody's kind of afraid to put their IP out there. But you have to find a way to educate people for safety and for being able to make a just a conscious decision on what they buy, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, Hell yeah. and, um, that's part of our responsibility. And I feel like Lex been pushing that. We definitely want to do more of that. So, you know, yeah. looking forward to it. Well, we run, we run busies, obviously know that. So we love you guys and appreciate we it, appreciate man. your, sure. uh, what you brought to the industry and we hope to, uh, 
to keep rocking with you guys and, and excited to see what you guys are bringing. Thank in you, future. man. Our biggest motto is that we just work with some of the greatest yeah. people in the industry, you know, and it's because of all you guys that we're able to do what yeah. we do. So no, that's cool, man. We, we, we feel likewise. So thanks for coming on, man. My pleasure. For Good sure. to get you out, sure. out of the party and get, yeah, get a little yeah. talk going. So. Most definitely. This is a oh, great yeah. spot, man. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. You know, you. Welcome to the farm table.